Okay. Hello, class. Uh, our topic today is triple five timer, or we can call it five 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 timer. IC. IC indicates integrated circuit. Uh, as you can see here, uh, it's very very incredibly uh, important, useful device. Uh, what you call it triple five timer IC. It's general purpose integrated circuit. Uh, why this device is so important? Because uh, it is uh, applicable for so many areas, thousands of applications. We can use this device. We can use this device uh, from uh, small applications like toys, kids, children toys, kitchen appliance devices, up to the most sophisticated engineering system, uh, what we call it uh, spacecraft. So it's very, very important device, what we call it triple five timer. So why, what makes it uh, smart, this device? Because it is easy to use. Uh, what does it mean by it's easy to use? By adding some additional components, few components, few transistor, sorry, few capacitor resistor. We can use this device for so many applications. As I said, it can be used in thousands of applications. So it's easy to use. That's one important advantage. It is, we need only few uh, additional components to, to design our to use our timer as a precision timer, as an oscillator. We can use it for automatic control systems. It's very incredibly useful precision timer, this device. So it's very important uh, to know this time, triple five time. Uh, it's very cheap. The, another fact about triple uh, five timer, it's very cheap device. Very simple to design. We need only few calculations. If you want to design a circuit using triple five timer, the calculations, design calculations are very few. We need few components, additional components. So it's very easy to use a triple five timer for different applications. Okay, so next, when you see the pin diagram, this triple five timer, uh, we are used, there are different type of uh, timers, but here we are using, uh, we are using, uh, we are using uh, what we call it DIP, dual inline package dip eight pin triple five time okay dual inline package eight pin uh triple five time dual inline package means this eight pins divided into two four on the left side four pins on the right side so it's dual package dual inline package that's why we call it deep so here this timer as you can see here uh, there are four pins on this side uh, four pins on this side four pins on this side okay total eight pin uh, so let's see the timer pin diagram so first in order to identify which one is pin number one uh, you have to check this groove or small circle here or on the device you will find this uh, groove here and a small circle here always not on the right always to the left uh, always in the left direction from these uh, circles you will find always pin number one so in this case this is our pin number one to the left then you count downward. So this will be pin number 
two. This will be pin number three, pin number four. So four pins on the one side, another four pins on another side because it is what? It is dual inline package. So where is pin number five? You count from here, in this case from bottom to up. Okay, five, six here, seven, pin number seven and pin number eight up to uh, four pins of this direction, pin one, pin two, pin three, pin four. So on this side, you count up, start from pin five up to pin eight. Now, this, let's see this, uh, what are these pins for triple five timer. So pin number one is a ground, always pin number one, it will be connected to our uh, our ground. Pin number one is connected to uh, ground. Okay. Uh, pin number eight is our battery VCC power supply. Uh, when you see O pump, chapter one we have seen O pump, right? An integrated circuit O pump. There uh, it needs a battery. Pin number four and seven, if you remember, positive and negative, 15 volts, right? DC. But here, uh, triple five timer, uh, only one VCC, pin number eight. Okay, so here you can connect the battery, uh, battery voltage. So this is ground for battery. Uh, this is our battery. So we connect it to which pin? Pin number eight. This is our uh, battery VCC. Okay, so how much battery uh, voltage you connect here? It depends. Uh, it depends from five volts up to fifty volt DC. You can give it uh, to the timer. Depends on the specification. So each timer, for example, this timer is any five five N. So you can check the specification to to, to find how much VCC for this time. So we now know pin number one and pin number eight. Uh, pin number one is connect ground, pin number eight is to connect uh, battery VCC. Okay, next. This device takes inputs. Uh, our inputs can be analog signal or digital signal, it doesn't matter. But uh, this triple five timer, uh, it has two main inputs. So hmm. pin number two here is a one of the input pin. We call it trigger inputs. Uh, how to use this? We'll come to that when we discuss uh, timer in circuits. Now we are discussing the pin diagram. So pin number two is one of the input, and pin number six is another input what we call it threshold input. Trigger is uh, one of the input, threshold is another input. Don't confuse with OPAMP 741 IC we discussed before. Uh, pin number six in OPAMP is output, right? Two, three are inputs, inverting and non-inverting. Pin number six, six is our output, but here it's different. Uh, pin number two and six are the two inputs. Uh, threshold pin number six, trigger pin number two. They are both inputs. Uh, there is another input for special applications. There is another input uh, pin number five called control voltage, but it's not always used. It's only for specific applications. So pin number five vo control voltage also is another type of input for this triple five type. Then where is the output? The output uh, for triple five timer is uh, pin number three. So pin number two trigger input, pin number six threshold input. Let me show you one example. Uh, what, uh, what does it mean by trigger input? Six is what? Another input called threshold. This IC takes two inputs from pin number two and pin number six. Sometimes from pin number five, uh where is the output this device will give us output at pin number 
3 here. You can see pin number 3 is our out. So another important thing you have to know. Uh, the output of this triple five timer at pin number 6 has only two states. It can be low or high. Either low or high is what we call it a digital signal, right? Digital signals, they have only two states. It can be high state, we call this high voltage state, the output can be high or it can be low, no other uh, option. We have only two states. It's not like a uh, continuous time signal, as you can see this continuous signal, it can, it can have any, any value. But uh, digital outputs, only two states. Either it can be high or it can be low. Another way of uh, expressing this, you can say this high voltage output binary one. Okay, we, we can call it binary one. This low voltage output of the IC, we can call it binary zero in digital electronic system. Or another terminology, you can call this high voltage output on state on state so the output will be on here pin number three it can be on or low or zero we call it off state so how many states the output only two possible states okay it can be either on state or it can be off state the on state we call it high voltage or binary one the low state here, uh, we call it binary zero or off state. So the output of a triple timer can be high or low, no other states, two states. Based on what? Why, how this output becomes high and low? Based on our inputs. Which are the inputs? Trigger, pin number two, threshold, pin number six, control voltage, pin number five. Based on this, based on your input, the output can be high or low. That's, that's a triple five timer. I will show you uh, how triple five timer works internally. Uh, I will explain the block diagram. Uh, but before that, let me show you one uh, example. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see this uh, example. You can, you can construct it this on your uh, TINA software also. This is our triple five timer IC. Uh, as you can see here, this is pin number two, is one input, right? What type of input? Trigger input. So I connect my input device here, switch pin number two. Another input is TH here, you see TH means threshold, pin number six, which is also connected to one IC, one switch here. So one input for six, trigger input for, so based on these two inputs, this triple five timer, it gives us output where? Pin number three, right? Pin number three is output. So this pin number three can be on or can be off state, or it can be binary one or binary zero, or it can, we can call it on state, off state, or high voltage, low voltage. So when it is high, I connect light emitting diode here, you see. Which, which pin this uh, light emitting there can it? Pin number three, our output, okay? So, now let me simulate. Okay, now you see, the light is, light emitting diode is on, it gives us light, green light, because pin number three is now high state, because when it is high voltage, it, we get light here. Now, when you give input, which pin? Pin number six. Let me click this switch. You will see the output. Now you see, it is off. Off because what? I give input signal to pin number six. In order to turn it on, I use another switch at pin number two. Two is also input. So look here. When I click this switch, now the light is on. When you click this switch, light is off. This is called bistable latch using triple five timer. You can control this lamp from two switches. This switch is turn off, this switch 
turn on. Okay, you can put one switch in your bedroom, one switch in living room. So two switches, you can control the light. The light in the living room will turn on the light. The switch, sorry, the switch in the living room turn on the light. In order to turn off, you have to use another switch in the bedroom. So two switches connected to two inputs of the timer, pin two and pin six, to control this light emitting diode, uh, which is uh, our output pin number three. Okay. So, okay, so uh, we have discussed now pin number one, ground, pin number eight, our battery, pin number two and uh, six and five, control voltage, they are inputs. Pin number three is our output. Uh, keep in your mind the output of a timer is uh, two states only. It can give you high voltage or low voltage, no other option. Okay. And pin number four, I will explain later. Inside the timer, there is a flip flop. So, in order to reset this flip flop, we have external reset pin, pin number four. I will explain what does mean by this. Another pin is seven. We call it discharge pin, which is also uh, important in designing timer uh, circuits or multi vibrators so inside the uh, pin number seven there is called a discharge transistor uh, so we'll discuss the application of this pin number seven when we come to the uh, modes of operations okay so this is a pin diagram of a triple five timer so next i will explain to you uh, the block diagram, basic how this timer uh, functions, how it works. If you understand this uh, basic operation of timer, it's very easy to for you to design any circuit using this triple uh, five timer. So let, let let's go to the uh, block diagram. This is a block diagram of a triple five timer. What are inside uh, inside the, the timer? How many pins? How many pins? Uh, pin number one, you see here. Pin number one is ground. Pin number two is trigger. Pin number three is output. Pin number four is called reset. Pin number five called control voltage. Pin number six is our threshold input pin number seven is called a discharge pin pin number eight is called uh vcc power supply you see how many eight pins but internally we, uh, this this triple five timer internally is uh, the internal schematic of this triple timer you can see here how many transistors inside around 28 transistors uh, resistors diodes internally uh, you see only the pins right eight pins but internal this there are around 20 transistors connected together resistors and diodes to form this ic general purpose ic we are not going to discuss this uh, schematic or circuit uh, of timer we discussed in block diagram form that's the easiest one so uh so this triple five timer from this block diagram it has uh how many subsystems the first part is this one okay which is called uh voltage voltage divider the first part then the output of this voltage divider, give it to another part, the second part of our timer here, which is called comparators. How many comparators? Two comparators. So the first block diagram, first block is, is what? Is voltage divider, voltage divider. The second system 
is comparator. Is what? Is comparator. Okay. How many comparators inside? Two comparators together. It's one block. Then the output of this comparator given to another system here. We call this SR flip flop. I will explain each part uh, one by one. Flip, flop. Okay. So, uh, so it's called SR flip flop. So this is the third part. What is the first part? A voltage divider. Second part, a comparator. Third part, a SR flip flop, as you can see here. Then the SR flip flop goes to another component called output. Here is output driving circuit. Part four. Look here. This voltage divider, let me repeat again. The first one is uh, this part of the circuit. Uh, we call it voltage divider. As you can see here, this voltage divider uh, gives uh, voltage uh, for the comparator part. So the first part is voltage divider. Then this, we have two comparators, comparator one and comparator two. So together, we call this part comparator part two. Then the output of this comparator, as you can see here, it's connected to uh, another device called SR flip flop. SR flip flop output goes to what? Goes to this component, output driving circuit. Then we have the output at pin number. Okay. Here, another important part, we call it discharge transistor, five. It's very important. To know one, two, three is here, four is here, and five is here. In block diagram form, triple fiber internal block diagram looks like this. If you understand how this works, it's very much easy for you to understand uh, the design, circuit, and so on of uh, this triple fiber. Very important device. As I said, it's used from simple applications like kid toys uh, to very uh, sophisticated engineering product like spacecraft. It's used in thousands of applications. We can use it as a timer. We can use it as oscillator, multivibrator. We can use it as automatic control. So uh, very, very important device timer. So let's see how it works. So the as you can see here, uh, the first part, this part, we call it what? Voltage divider part, which connects which pin? Pin eight connected to this system and pin one connected to the system. Okay, so internally, when you see this timer, pin number one and pin number eight, connected to uh, the first system, our voltage divider, okay? Voltage divider system. Okay, so where it goes? From, uh, it goes from where? From pin eight here, Connected to this resistor, how much? Five kilo ohm resistor. Uh, another five kilo ohm resistor in series. Another five kilo ohm resistor in series. So these three resistors, all five kilo, connected in series from pin eight, which is our battery, right? Up to up to what? Pin one. What is pin one? Our ground. So when you see internally. What is pin eight? We connect our battery here, right? Our battery here, okay. So that is our battery BCC. Which pin? Pin number eight. Then there is uh, pin number one. We connect what? Pin number one is always connected to ground. Internally, 
There are three resistors. These resistors you cannot see. They are internal to the timer. Each resistor, they are equal 5K, 5K. 5K, 5K, and 5K. Okay. They are equal resistance 5K. Now, in some books, you will see uh, why this IC is called triple five timer. The name. Where this five, five, five comes from. Because internally, there are five, three five kilo ohm resistors in series. Uh, that's why we call this triple five timer, five, five, five timer. So, uh, this 555 kilo ohm resistors connect from pin A to pin 1. That is our first, uh, first system in our timer. What we call these three resistors? We call them voltage, uh, voltage divider. Okay, they are called uh, voltage divider system. Okay. So we call them uh, voltage uh, divider. Three equal five kilo ohm resistors connected in series from battery to ground. What is purpose? To divide this battery voltage into two parts, one part here, another part here. It's a voltage divider, right? Whatever voltage you connect at pin eight is divided into two. The first part, Look here. So it's better to understand this by example. If you apply, let's say, 9 volt battery here. So these resistors, as you know, is this, they divide the voltage. How much voltage input? 9 volt. Connected 9 volt to ground here, pin 1. So this 9 volt, 1 is here divided and give it to the which comparator? Comparator one, okay. Another voltage here is given to us input to comparator C2. Not nine volt. We are sorry, we apply here nine volt to the battery, pin number eight. How much voltage? Uh, how much voltage comes to Comparator one from the battery. How much voltage comes to comparator two? Depends on what? These resistors. They divide this nine volt. Six volt from this nine volt, six volt comes to comparator C1. Three volt comes to comparator C2. You see the voltage, 9 volt, divided into 2. 6 volt to comparator C1, uh, the remaining 3 volt for comparator C2. So how do you know this? Here you see, uh, it says what? 2 thirds of, third of the battery. Whatever battery you apply, 2 thirds will come here. How about comparator C1? Only 1 third. So, if you apply 9 volt battery here, always how much voltage comes to the comparator C1 here? Only how much? Two thirds of VCC. This is our battery. How much VCC? 9 volt here. So, two thirds of 9 volt, how much? Two thirds times VCC is how much the battery you connect? 9 volt. You can connect 12 volt, 15 volt, any battery. Now how much? 3 by 3, 3 cancelled here, it will be 3. So 3 times 2, how much? 6 volt connected to C1. How about comparator C2? It gets only how much? Because, because of this voltage divider, it gets only one third. The first comparator always gets two thirds because of these two resistors. But comparator C1 gets only one third of the voltage, nine. So what is one third? Uh, one over three. What is our battery? Nine volt. Okay. So if you get three canceled with this, you get how much? You get three volt. 
So you see, this 9 volt divided into 2. 6 volt for comparator C1, 3 volt for comparator uh, C2. That's why the first part of triple five timer consists of three resistors in series. They are used to divide the battery voltage into two parts. Two third VCC for comparator one. One third VCC for comparator C2. If you see the schematic diagram, you can see here these three resistors inside the IC. Right? How much? 5 kilo ohm here, 5 kilo ohm here, 5 kilo ohm. That's why the IC is called triple 5 time. Okay? The IC is called what? Triple 5 time. That's the first part. Uh, the first part of our uh, triple 5 timer is this voltage divider. Okay. Then this VCC, which is 9 volt, is how much here? Uh, look here. If you, have, if you connect here VCC, 9 volt, how much voltage we get here, this, for, this comparator? We get 2 third of VCC. VCC how much? 9 volt. If you substitute 9 volt here, we get how much? We get 6 volt here. Okay, next, how much voltage here? It's only one third, as I said. One third of VCC. VCC is our battery. How much battery we connect? Nine volts. So if you substitute VCC nine, nine divided by three, it will be three volts here. Okay. What is the next system? The next component, the next part of a timer. The next part, as we said, is a comparator part. Two comparators. Two comparators. Okay, so let's see now the second bar comparators. Okay, so comparators uh, here, as you can see here, it has two inputs. One plus, one minus input. A comparator means a device with two inputs. One V1, voltage V1. Uh, for positive terminal, we apply what? V1. For negative terminal, we apply V2. Now, this is how comparator works. If V1 greater than V2, if the voltage at the positive terminal greater than voltage at the negative terminal, let's say if you apply here 3 volt, V1 is how much? V1, you apply 3 volt. V2 is a voltage at the negative terminal. We apply one volt. Okay, so one uh, volt. So V2, how much? V2 is one volt. Now, which one is larger, the positive or the negative? The positive one, V1, is larger than V2. In this case, what will be the output of the comparator? The output will be high state. Or you can call it binary, binary one. What's the output? One. High means what? One. Or you can call it on. Now, if if you apply uh, four volt here, V one is four volt, V two is nine volt. What will happen on the output here for this comparator? When you say a comparator, it has two inputs, it compares the two, it will give you either one or zero. It gives you either high or low. The output can be on or off. So, in this case, uh, how much is V1? V1 is 4 volt. V2 is 9 volt. So, which one is larger? Now, the Voltage at the negative terminal, V1 is, sorry, V2, uh, V2 is larger than V1, right? The negative terminal voltage, 9 volt, is greater than 4 volt here. In this case, what will be the output of the comparator? It, is, it will be what? 
it will be low state or it be off you can call it off state or you can call it what binary zero zero and one that's we have only two states in digital systems we have two states on off high low or zero one that's it so that's how a comparator works so when you come here we have again two comparators c1 and c2 so c1 compares what c1 has two inputs right the negative terminal is connected to the voltage divider how much voltage comes two third of vcc how much vcc nine volts so nine divided times two over three we get how much six volts to negative terminal let's fix it depends on the battery always comparator c1 the negative terminal is connected to two third of vcc comparator how many inputs two inputs so what is the other input here positive terminal that is our input threshold input pin six in our ic what is pin six here uh what is pin six is threshold right it's we call we call it one of the inputs so when you come here pin six uh as you can see here pin six is connected to positive terminal of comparator c1 these comparators are inside the timer when you see the uh, uh, circuit diagram you will see here a threshold comparator right you see it says what threshold comparator so all this part the green part is a comparator comparator c1 comparator c1 has how many inputs two inputs one input is pin number six as you can see here from outside from outside input pin number six okay what is other uh, input for c1 uh, for c1 one of the input is the negative input is from the divider the voltage divider the resistor how much volt comes to third of the battery six volt another input is the threshold input pin number six so based on the input at pin number six the comparator c1 output can be high okay it can be high high means uh we we say what binary uh binary one right it will be one what to be one comparator one to give us output one what will be the condition okay what will be the condition uh, the condition will be compare these two voltages look here compare these two voltage plus and minus with v1 and v2 if v1 is greater than v2 it will be high if v1 is less than v2 it will be low okay so similarly here uh here we have two sort of vcc comes from the voltage divider the first part how much voltage we get six volt so what is the second input is our threshold pin number six now if you apply at pin number six if you connect two volt what will happen to the output of the comparator c1 which one is larger negative is six volt positive is only two volt in this case output will be zero please keep in your mind when i say zero i mean low voltage low and high or off and on now this one is always fixed at six volts right uh, why it is six here it comes from the voltage divider vcc is a battery nine volts times two third we get six volts now if you apply nine volt what will happen here at pin six threshold input okay threshold input when you see the ic at uh, pin six here if you apply nine volt as input 
for pin number six as input, what will happen? Which one is larger? The positive is larger now, right? When the positive is larger, the output of the comp comparator will be one. That's for comparator C1. Comparator C2, okay? Uh, you can see here, uh, this uh, trigger, it says what? Trigger comparator. This part, second, this, this part of the timer is made up of transistors and resistors is comparator two. Here we have comparator one. Here we have comparator two. What is this pink one? I think this is uh, purple one, sorry. This purple color here. It's uh, our voltage divider, three resistors. Uh, so look here, once two served of VCC from the resistor goes to comparator one, one served of VCC here goes to comparator two, okay? So here, uh, one served of VCC comes to which pin? Positive pin of comparator C2. How much voltage comes here? Depends on the battery. How much voltage you apply? Battery, nine volts. Divide it by three. So one third of VCC, how much? Nine divided by three to be three volts. That is the plus input. How about the minus input? It comes from where? Our trigger input, pin number two. Now this comp comparator, as you know, it compares the two inputs. Which one is larger? Depends on it will give either one or zero. Now, if you apply trigger zero volts here, what will happen? What will happen here? What will be the output of comparator C2? Which one is larger? Always if the positive is larger, output will be one. If the positive is less than the negative, output is zero. So here, Positive input, three volt, negative input, zero volt. So always, the positive, in this case, the positive is greater than the negative. Three is greater than zero. So what will be the output? One. Okay, what will happen uh, if you apply six volts here? Pin number two is what? Another input. For comparator one, we say pin number six. For comparator two, we are talking about pin number two. Comparator C1, compare, compare what? The pin number six threshold with two third of VCC. Comparator C2 compares pin number two trigger input with one third of VCC. So two comparators, we have two outputs. So in this case, if, uh, Positive is three, negative is six. What will be output of comparator? It will be, uh, it will be zero because the positive is less than the negative. That is the second part in our system. This part, which is called comparator. What is the first part? Voltage divider. Second part, uh, the uh, comparators. Two comparators. How many output? Two outputs. Okay. Then, uh, what is the next? Uh, these two outputs of the comparator. How many comparators? We have two comparators. These two outputs goes to the third part. What is the third part in our system? Is what we call it. Uh, what we call it. Uh, SR flip flop. Okay, SR flip flop. I will explain uh, how this SR flip flop works. So, this SR flip flop, it has how many inputs? Two inputs. Here you see we have our SR flip flop. It has two inputs set and reset. S is set. R is reset, two inputs. And it, it will give us two outputs, Q and Q bar. Uh, 
when q is 1, definitely q bar means the negative of that, negation of that. If 1, is this will be 0. If q is 0, q bar will be uh, 1. q and q bar are the opposite. So, flip flop, it has two inputs. What is S? Set input. What is R? Reset input. It has two outputs, Q and Q bar. But for triple five timer, we are not using Q. We are using only one output, Q bar. Now how it works? So it has two inputs, set and reset. What is the output? Q bar, right? Okay. So when both S and R zero, the output, if you apply both zero here and zero here, if both set and reset are zero, the Q bar remains the same. Okay? We call it previous state. If previously it was zero, it continues to be zero. No change. Okay? If both set and reset are zero, the output, we call it no change condition. Okay. What will happen if set is zero, reset pin is one? We are, we, are, we, are, we are seeing the true stable of this SR flip flop. Okay. Now, if set is zero and reset is one, here is zero, here is one. What will be the output? The output will be zero. It will be off. Q bar will be off state. Now, if set is one, and reset is zero, the output will be one. Okay, what will happen if both are one? This state is called invalid state. The output, we, we don't know the output here. Undetermined invalid state. It's called invalid state. So that is a true stable of uh, SR flip flop. SR flip flop is a digital uh, combination, uh, sorry, sequential circuit. Uh, it has two inputs set input, reset inputs. Uh, it has two outputs Q, Q bar, but we are not using Q bar, now we are using Q. Sorry. Uh, this is Q. Uh, let, let me repeat again because I made a mistake. Okay. So one of the input is S, another input is R, reset and set. Right. Uh, okay. It has uh, two outputs, Q and Q R. So when both S and R are zero, uh, no change condition, right? Uh, no change condition. If both are zero. Now, if set is zero, the set is one, uh, Q, bar, Q will be zero, Q bar will be one. Q bar and Q, if Q bar and the uh, inverted, okay. Now if S is one and reset is zero, what will be Q? Q will be one, but Q bar will be zero. Okay. Finally, uh, this is our true stable, true stable for uh, SR flip flop. What will happen if both are one? Set and reset. In this case, uh, it will be invalid condition. 
invalid uh, condition. Okay, so this is how the flip flop, SR flip flop works. Okay, so when you see uh, when you see uh, our timer, uh, we have three resistors. The first part, three resistors, right? H15 kilo ohm connected from BCC battery to uh, ground here. Okay. Now these are equal resistors, 5K, 5K, uh, 5K, right? Then uh, one of these voltage, which is how much? Two thirds of this voltage goes to one comparator. Inside, there is one comparator. Which part? It goes to which part? The negative part, right? Comparator has two inputs, negative connected to what? Two thirds of VCC here. How about the positive? The positive is our threshold here. So look here, the threshold input compare, this is comparator, uh, this is our comparator C1. This voltage, the negative part comes from the BCC. How much voltage? Two third of BCC. Uh, so if you apply 9 volt here, battery, two thirds of that will be 6 volt to the negative terminal. What is the other input? The other input is the threshold input here. Whatever you input you apply here uh, at this pin will be compared with 6 volt. So here we have our output. For what? For C1. How about C2? Another comparator, C2. Okay, so one voltage comes here. Which voltage? The positive, sorry, positive input of the comparator C2. I'm, I'm showing you what is internal to the timer, C2. What is the negative input of this comparator? which connected to, which comes from where? Which comes from pin number two, the threshold, the trigger input. Okay, so trigger input compare with how much voltage here? One third of VCC. If it is nine volt VCC, divide by three, it will be how much volt? Three volt from the divider, it comes here. To what? To the positive terminal. Where is the negative terminal? From our input, external input, pin number two. So whatever input you apply here, compare with three volt, and we have output here. So how many outputs here we have? One from C1, one from C2. This goes to what we call it SR flip flop. It's called what? SR flip flop. One comparator comes here, another comparator comes here as input. So this is reset input, this is set input. SR flip flop, how many inputs? Two inputs, right? So when you see here, uh, comparator C1 goes to reset input, comparator C2 output goes to uh, set, goes to set. This is our SR flip flop. It has how many outputs? Two, Q and Q bar. But we are not using Q, we are using only Q bar. As you can see here, Q, uh, Q uh, is, is not connected to anything, it's not used. Okay, so 
here you see SR flip flop. Uh, so it has two outputs Q bar and Q. So we are using only which one? Q bar. So depends on R and S. Uh, Q bar from this through stable for Q bar depends on what? Depends on uh, S and R. Now, okay. So if let's say uh, nine volt we apply here nine volt so how much here two third of VCC how much is two third uh, six volt okay here one third of the battery how much uh, three volt here okay now at pin two let's say we apply uh, zero volt how much we apply zero volt at pin six here we apply again zero volt both zero volt for pin threshold and trigger input we apply zero volt now what will be the output of comparator c1 compare the two which one is larger the negative is larger. Negative larger means this will be what? Comparator C1 output zero. How about comparator C2? Three volt, zero volt. Which one is larger? The positive. When positive is larger than the negative, the output will be one. We know how comparator works. Okay, so this comparator C1 goes to which pin? Reset. So reset is how much now? Zero. How about set? The flip-flop set is connected to the output of comparator C2. So S is 1, R is 0. In this case, what will happen? If set is, what is set? Set is 1, reset is 0. Okay, let's see our true stable. If set is 1, reset is 0, what will be Q bar? Q bar will be? Zero. What is Q bar? Q bar will be. We are not using Q. We are using Q bar. If R is zero, if S is one, from our truth table, Q bar will be zero. Okay. Next device, next subsystem is this one, which is inverter. As you know, inverter. Uh, symbol like this. So if you apply one, you will get zero inverted, right? If you apply zero, what will be the output? It will be one inverted. So here from Q bar is zero. So what will be the output? The output will be one. You see how pin number three output is controlled by the pin number six and two inputs. Now let's see another example. Uh, as you know, this is always six volts from the battery divided. This is how much? Three volts. Now if this is uh, nine volts, and if this is uh, uh, six volts, pin to how much? We apply six volts, right? Uh, okay. Uh, threshold, we apply how much? Nine volts. Now, what will be the output of comparator C1? Which one is larger? Positive is larger. So it will be one. How about here? Which one is larger? The negative is larger. Negative is six, positive is three. So negative larger means it will be how much? Zero. Now, Reset is one, set is zero. What will be the output of the flip flop? Reset is one, set is zero, Q bar will be 
one. So what is Q bar? Q bar will be one. So then there is what? Inverter here. If you apply one, what will be the output? Zero. Output will be off. If you apply a uh, light emitting diode, if you connect a uh, light emitting diode here or a bulb, uh, what will happen? It will be the light will be off. Okay. So uh, this is how a triple five timer uh, block diagram uh, works.